Hi folks, it's me, Ali Nassan. I'm here today joining me at the AAE meeting 2017, Dr. Shafiq Safi. Shafiq, thank you for joining me. Thank you. Dr. Dr. Safi, our RWE faculty up in Montreal, beautiful practice. You've probably seen it in the practice profiles uh, video that I did. And he ha he's at the AAE here with me and he's got a few cases he wants to share with you guys. And the first case here is an interesting one, which is a kind of a revitalization. The key with root canal therapy is not just to always go ahead and do a root canal, exactly. but to preferably preserve and prevent a root canal, preserve the pulp. So why don't you walk us through this case, uh, Shafiq? Sure. So uh, I got that case at uh, the beginning of uh, winter this year. It was a very harsh winter in uh, Quebec uh, where I practiced. And this young patient, 11-year-old girl, walks into my practice. She tells me she felt on the ice uh, about two days ago. So first, her medical history is clear. She has no known uh, drug allergy. And when I did my clinical exam, there was clearly a, uh, a complicated fracture, meaning the crown and the dentine and, and the pulp was exposed. Uh, she was asymptomatic, there was no probing, no mobility, there was no signs of any uh, spontaneous pain or, or any, anything that would suggest any pulpal necrosis. However, what was interesting in the x-ray, and as you can see, is that the, uh, the, the apex are, is open, so it's an immature root, and we can clearly see that a large piece of the crown has been broken, and this becomes very challenging to manage, especially that we have a vital pulp in there, because we see, I saw the tissue clinically in there, and so we need to really preserve that tissue to be able to further promote the natural uh, maturation of the root in terms of length and in width. And maybe when the root canal is indicated, then it will be much easier to do than on an open apex like that. So there was an exposure of the yes. pulp that you could clinically see? Of course. So what I did in this case is that I opted to do a vital pulp therapy in order to uh, preserve the vital pulp. But first, uh, just to talk a bit about the diagnosis of these cases, uh, they're very hard to really know the histologically what's happening inside, but clinically, since the pulp is exposed and there's no symptoms, uh, it's like an irreversible pulpitis, but it's asymptomatic irreversible pulpitis since there's no any symptoms, and there's no more apical tissues on the x-ray, we see there's no whitening of any PDL, and there's no signs of, uh, of uh, percussion or palpation uh, sensitivity. By the way, uh, sorry for the interruption. Yeah. In terms of the size of the exposure, yes. do you, was it just a pinpoint exposure? Because it seems to be a sheer fracture of the, uh, yeah, of the incisal edge. It was, was it like the whole roof of the chamber? It was a whole chamber that was really exposed to, uh, okay. to that, and this would really dictate, I could yeah. see the pulp really clinically. Didn't try to uh, kind of uh, use an explorer to find out if it's the pulp. Right? Oh, no, no, no. I just went okay. in there, not even needed the microscope to see. The pulp was there looking at me directly exactly. and telling me, like, either do something, cut me, or just to do some, uh, something to save me, to be honest. Obviously, the point here is very important to make sure that you don't disturb the pulp and keep it clean. And then the next step is obviously sterility and keeping exactly. it clean. So how do you go about managing that? So to manage that, uh, I opted, of course, to do a, a partial or full pulpotomy. In this case, since the the, the part that was uh, exposed to the pulp was very big, I opted to do a full pulpotomy. The prognosis of this case was favorable. And it's very important in this case so to preserve the vitality of the pulp. So we need to really work under aseptic uh, measures to prevent any further uh, infiltration of bacteria inside the pulp. So what I did is after local anesthesia, a rubber dam has to be placed the primary uh, isolation with the rubber dam, secondary isolation with either, uh, let's say, an opal dam or like some kind of uh, caulking, like material. caulking material, which is uh, really good, really good in, in terms of preventing the infiltration of the saliva from underneath the rubber dam. I rinsed the exposure with the saline in order to remove really any like gross debris or any gross bacteria, like really remove the uh, bacterial, uh, reduce the bacterial count. Then I proceeded with my uh, pulpotomy with uh, using copious water irrigation to really preserve the vitality and to lessen the damage of the underneath uh, healthy tissue using uh, an abrasive diamond burr that's really new, that's really cuts efficiently without really tearing the tissue, you need really to cut it. And it has to be very low torque kind of a uh, yeah. situation, so at higher speed. Very high speed. And lots of water lots coolant. Of water, exactly. Keys to preserve the pulp, right? Very Which good. brings up, uh, sorry for the interruption, no. but it brings up a good point here in terms of the decision to just do a pulp cap at that point yes. versus to do a short partial pulpotomy. I think it's very important for everyone to understand that the goal here is to make sure that there is no bacteria left behind. And especially if the exposure time is long, then the surface part could be contaminated. Exactly. Which is the point. That, go ahead. So, yeah. No, no. So, it, that's the thing. So, the part was very, the exposure was very big. So, capping this part was kind of very challenging at this point. So, and, and doing a partial pulpotomy was also a bit not indicated because a large part of the pulp in the chamber was already exposed and, and thus was already irritated by the bacteria infiltration. So I opted for a full pulpotomy until I found, until I got into the level of the healthy pulp. 
I controlled my bleeding or hemostasis with a moist cotton pellet that I soaked with sodium hypochlorite, leave it in for a couple of minutes, and then after that, most of the hemostasis is controlled. It's very important also to avoid using any hemostatic agent, so anything that's like ferric sulfate or any of these chemical agents, because that will cause a blood clot, the creation of a blood clot, which can then really uh, uh, cause even a bit of damage to the underlying pulp and reduce the chances of healing at the end. So it really has to be... And they're inflammatory as well. I mean, the, exactly. the clot comes so with additional inflammation. It's an inflammation, inflammation. reaction, yeah. which, which yeah. you don't need. You need to really control that inflammation that the pulp has been exposed to. Yeah. Once hemostasis has been completed, I use in this case the bioceramic uh, root repair material putty that I placed under, uh, towards, uh, against the pulp stump, about two millimeters or three millimeters of thickness, and after that, I put a moist cotton pellet and then I restored with a temporary restoration. And then I brought the patient back a couple of days after that to make sure that the material has set. This was really uh, like a personal, I think, uh, decision here. We can really, in some cases, just uh, go ahead and place a, a, a temporary restoration right away. But I personally like to see really that, make sure that that material has set in between the appointments. And after that, I sent for uh, the referral uh, for the final restoration. I think that might be remnants in terms of the protocols for the MTA. Uh, what I would yeah. now, this is what I'm recommending now, is to just put the putty in there, because it will set. The only thing exactly. is that uh, to, you can't put a composite on it directly, so you want to have an intermediary glassy onomer that's the that sets quickly, exactly. some, some kind of a, you know, a vitromere or something like that that can uh, the quickly cure and light, and then you can etch and bond your composite right away. So, you know, I mean, it's nice to have the patient back to confirm and make sure everything is good, but I think most of the time, the yeah, it's set. So, after, this is the pre op uh, x ray, as you can see on the post op x ray, we can clearly see the uh, bioceramic root repair material uh, next to the pulp stump and a temporary restoration on top. The patient came back six months later and uh, she was asymptomatic still. I took the x-ray and the two, uh, what we can see really is that the uh, apical area of the root has matured, especially in terms of length. You can see the closure of the apex, also in terms of width. And what we could see really is the formation of a dentinal bridge underneath the bioceramic root repair material. And this is really a good sign of, of healing in those cases that the root has finished uh, or almost completed its maturation. And now we have this dentinal bridge that's really protecting whatever tissue has been conserved in that uh, root canal of the tooth. If we can just uh, in general talk about the, the vital pulp therapy, of course, just to recap everything, the main goal is to preserve the vital pulp. If we can, the best root canal filling is a vital pulp. I mean, I've heard this from many uh, uh, great uh, uh, speakers and, and, and so if we can preserve it, we have to always aim for it. In this case, I opted for a full pulpotomy because the area that was exposed was very large and I had to control hemostasis. So, and the time between the exposure and the, and the patient to come see me was about one or two days since the accident happened. So really the pulp was very much inflamed and there was a lot of bacteria that invaded the area. So you have to make sure that you remove everything that's inflamed and thus I proceeded towards a, a, a full pulp bottom. The fact that the patient doesn't have any symptoms is, is because the pulp is unroofed, so there's no exactly. pressure building up. Exactly. So there is some inflammation and the exposure is a form of contamination, so it's definitely the wise thing to do would be to remove some, uh, some of the pulp uh, coronally and do it in an atraumatic way as possible. Lots of fluid and, and uh, lots of, uh, like low torque. Ab abrasive diamond burr, exactly, to really make sure that you're cutting and not just tearing the cells. And generally speaking, the outcome of such a procedure is a very good. The latest uh, studies by El Malizio or Witherspoon in 2006, they show an outcome about 94 to 95% success. And what I mean, that the signs of really of that the procedure is working is that patient is asymptomatic and there's really signs of a geographical uh, maturation of the root in terms of length and in terms of width. And this is what we can see really in that case, which is really a, a great uh, a, a indication that full pulpotomy or vital pulp therapy is a very valid treatment plan that we always have to keep in mind before jumping into really doing root canals and just extirpating the pulp yeah. and placing the material inside. And the key here is to understand is the reason why this works is in a younger patient with a wide open apex so that the vascularity is there in terms exactly. of the pulp regenerating and, and also recovering. Once you have an adult patient, then that situation changes from a that's pulp exposure. And uh, that's in a case in which you have to make sure that the pulp doesn't go necrotic, because oftentimes in these cases, following trauma, if you just kind of wait and watch and the pulp goes necrotic very quickly, the tooth can go through inflammatory root resorption, which is certainly not the kind of thing you want to have. So adult teeth are treated a little differently than, than uh, younger teeth. 
under development. And in those cases, the mechanism of action of a material such as the bioceramic or traditionally originally MTA or calcium hydroxide was to, first of all, create a sterile environment right. by using its antibacterial effect, correct? And correct. then enhance, why don't you go explain the mechanism by which um, you, you get the bridging and the closure of the root. What you said, Dr. Nassi, is good, is, is actually very correct. The immune capacity or the immune defense system capacity of the pulp in a very young patient is very, is, has a very high potential. All we need to do is to control the asepsis or, or have microbial control and so we could have all these immune uh, cells that would come and furthermore uh, continue the formation of the root canal system and that bridging that you see in the x-ray is really caused by uh, uh, the material, the bioceramic material that really will induce the, uh, the, the, the young cells of the pulp to really form or to, dip, or to deposit uh, dentin against this barrier via uh, various chemical pathways that have been uh, uh, discussed and proven all in uh, many articles of, uh, that have been published over the years. Really the key point is to really have microbial control and really the, the human body can do the rest by, uh, by, by doing this. Yeah, you definitely do get differentiation. You have uh, pluripotent cells in the, in the in pulp. The, in, the, in the young pulp, yeah. In yeah, the young stem pulp, cells, exactly. Pluripotent stem cells. This is why it's important to maintain the vitality of those cells by using a lot of water during the procedure, right. avoid using any uh, uh, hemostatic agent or chemical agent that will induce further inflammation and further damage to these cells because if you cause damage to these cells then there's, there's nothing to be able to, to complete the formation of the root canal yeah. and then this is where you get complications after that. Exactly. Having a biocompatible material will allow you to have that dental bridge that occur, that forms against the material that you have and then the root formation continues naturally. So the root sheath is there, this is not actually triggered by the material. The, the, the root formation completes naturally the way it would have had it not been traumatized. So that's wonderful. That's a great case, uh, Shafiq. Thank Why you. don't we take a quick break and come back and talk about For the next sure. case? Of course, definitely.